is phenomenal. So let me please welcome Maria Jane. Yeah, on the uh, that one or the other one? The other one. Oh, yeah, the other one. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I check this. The uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find it. That's okay. Let me get out the light. Out. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, so many of you have read or heard or seen me somewhere on the, in the news, right, in the last month or so. And some of you follow me on Facebook, which I'm really happy to meet some of you here today. You know, um, when this photo, What's Your Excuse, came out, it's pretty powerful. How many of you guys saw that picture and had an initial reaction? What was your reaction? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, you know, I don't mind some constructive criticism. So if you felt any negative feelings or if somebody you knew had some negative feelings, I have a lot of people on Facebook and via email who have told me they've had discussions with their friends that, um, over this controversy. So, did anyone hear anything negative? Yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of women that I've talked to, I have two daughters, a wife, everybody's working out and all that. And um, some of them had the reaction of, what's my excuse for what? For not looking like this girl or for not something else? So, there's no backstory or context to it. And, um, and I did read a lot about the af after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the thing. What's my excuse for not for not looking like her? Yeah, and so you know, to give you some of that backstory, I created this photo last year. This was taken when my youngest was eight months old. It was actually um, photographed in August, and I remember that day I took it. I was I was so proud. You know, here I did. I looked great. I made a poll. I was gonna take a picture with my kids at the end of summer. Of course, it's the very very end of summer because I kept putting it off because I wasn't ready yet. But I took this photo and I knew that it was going to be a powerful image because I gave birth in 2009, 2010, and 2011. <laughs> those, those every single year, and I was able to get my body back. And I did that through a lot of discipline, focus, goal setting, passion, consistency. And so I thought, let me post this picture on my Facebook page. I mean, it's fitness oriented. Everybody who knows me, especially people who've known me for a very long time, knows that I'm very passionate about fitness. And I have pretty good intention, a lot of integrity. So I posted it on my Facebook page. I've never posted it anywhere else. And then it just went viral. <laughs> and it went a little nuts last year, too. I mean, I was on Good Day Sacramento. Did anyone see that on Good Day Sacramento last year? So I was on Good Day Sacramento at the 9 a.m. hour just talking about that photo and the controversy that it stirred. And a lot of people were pretty impressed. They said, wow, you've got a great physique. I only have one child or I have no children or my children are 20 years old. What's my excuse for not taking care of my health? Because everyone knows your health is important to you. But of course, I got some of the bad emails. And I got the, you're a fat shamer. You know, you are a bully. You are a disgrace to woman. You, um, you promote eating disorders. How dare you? And so this went on for about a year. I didn't really respond to it because I'm not a negative person. I don't like to respond to negativity. But then one day, I think it was in September, I received an email one morning and um, I don't know what was going through my head, but I do know I popped open an email and I knew that the photo was recirculating itself. And I saw an email that said, you should be ashamed of yourself. Here you are, uh, absolutely not a role model for women anywhere. You should take your profile picture down. And that's when I got onto my computer and said, you know what, this is gonna be my first and my final apology about this picture. I'm not gonna mention that I'm not a personal trainer, that I don't have a nanny, that I struggled with my genetics. I'm not even gonna say that I indulged while I was pregnant or used my growing belly for being active. But what I will say is that whatever came out of your head are the thoughts that you created. So you need to own it. I didn't create it. You created it. I didn't call you fat. I didn't say you're lazy. I didn't say why are you injured and not walking right now. I didn't say what is your excuse for not looking like me. I said what's your excuse. And whatever your insecurities that you had at that moment, you applied onto me, which was not my fault. It's absolutely yours. And you know what I did in that moment that they were upset? I took their power that they gave to me and I gave back to them. And they should have appreciated it because when you give power to somebody, you're giving them the power to change, to make their own choice, to realize that through their own thoughts, they are in charge of their own actions and therefore their own destiny. 
So I thought that was a pretty powerful message, don't you? Yeah. Oh, so did a lot of other people. <laughs> Yahoo created the story. Um, I forgot what date it was posted. But at that time, that photo and that message was viewed 16 million times. It was liked over 200,000 times. I don't know how many shares or comments, but it was going out of my control viral at this point. And I was able to go on the Good Morning America, Today Show, CNN. I interviewed in, uh, I didn't interview in Australia, but I was on satellite with them on the Today Show. I did other international shows in the UK. I've gotten emails from Peru, from <coughs> India, from Mexico, from Africa. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is out of my control, viral, crazy. People who said that I have inspired them. People who have said that because of me, even though they have five kids and or they have um, they've been divorced or they all they did was focus on their business, they are so unhealthy. And because of this picture, because of my message, they're realizing they can take ownership of their destiny and they are going to work out today and they're going to take care of their bodies. Which wow, that made my heart sink. And I remember on this trip to um, New York, I was on the Bethany show, and I was you know at this time people always ask how are you doing and. Of course, it's, it's very overwhelming. Naturally, everyone wants to talk to you. You know, I, I didn't know what I was doing in that first two weeks when I went viral and everyone wanted me to be on their show. But I remember distinctly in the, the car, taking us back to the airport, looking at the window in the silence of my brain, you know, after all this you know, hoopla went about, I just started to cry. And I was in a lot of tears. He, my husband was sleeping. He was tired. <laughs> he said he's been so helpful during this whole experience. But I just started to cry because I realized to myself, why is this happening? Like, I don't get it. Like, why is this all happening right now? And then I remembered of my first memory as a child of why I developed this passion. And I thought about my mother. And I don't want to cry because I will cry. I can't remember. <laughs> you know, growing up with a mother who was so ambitious, she was you know, she started as a state worker. My parents met New Zealand, came here with nothing. Um, my dad, grad, um, he, he retired as a sergeant in the, in the San Francisco Police Department, and my mom was a state worker. But she started, um, they started in real estate, they started in real estate, and then in San Francisco. And then they um, opened care homes for the elderly here in Sacramento. <coughs> so here's my mom. I used to, you know, your mother is usually your first love. Anyone, does anyone have kids out there? You know that your, your child loves you. They're so dependent on you. So I don't remember a memory of not having my mom take prescription pills some, for some reason, for some health-related reason. I mean, she had diabetes in her 20s, strokes in her 30s, heart attacks in her 40s, and a kidney transplant. She's 52 right now, and she's thriving, but she's not striving. And I thought about that memory, and that made me cry because that memory made me want to eat healthier. I mean, I grew up just like the rest of you guys. I ate fruit rollers. I loved apple jacks. My favorite cereal was Little Charm. You know, I, I loved all that stuff. I saw what my mom was eating, and I knew, because you have, as a child, you know what's right and wrong. You know that that's not healthy for you. So I started making healthier choices at a young age. You know, and to give you more background about myself, I started, you know, I went to Laguna Creek High School with Rochelle. We were two years together. <laughs> you know, I was, I was a very shy kid, funny. To, you know, I was, I was shy, but I loved cheerleading. And I um, became, um, I, I got involved into pageants. I competed, I was Miss Philippine Sacramento when I was 16, went to Toronto, won an inter a national title, went to, internet, to Texas, won an international title. I mean, basically I was pretty successful at pageantry. Um, I graduated from UC Davis with two majors and a minor. You know, at 22, I decided to move to San Francisco, and I didn't know anybody there. So what did I do? I joined a pageant because you do you, you you work with your resources, you do what you can. So I joined a pageant, became Miss San Francisco Chinatown, um, found an awesome place for $600, full house, and I just rented it. I mean, Whoa. yeah, that's just all about building connections, building a network. I just did what I knew. That's what you do, right? And then here I was, 22. I was at the time Miss Philippines USA at this point. Started Miss Philippines Sacramento, now I'm Miss Philippines USA. Competed in Manila, Philippines. You know, I, met, I became Miss Bikini California. I, uh, I placed top five in two national competitions. And that year, 2003 exactly, 10 years ago in November was my last competition. And that was the day, that was the month that I also threw up for the first time. 
now I'm going to start getting teary again. <laughs> you know, I struggled with an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. I was bulimic. And it was a really tough period in my life because I realized here I am, I accumulated all this success. And I was, you know, I was the you know, epitome of what you should be doing in your early 20s. I was.